Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about another discovery coming from the Milky Way galaxy. A discovery of some really unusually large structure. Possibly one of the largest structures discovered in the last few years. But what exactly this structure is, and how it was formed, is not something we can actually answer right now. And that's because even right now the scientists are not entirely sure what they're looking at. On the one hand, it could be some sort of a large gas filament. A huge amount of gas, thousands and thousands of light years in length. But on the other hand, it could also be a galactic arm. Which I guess is sort of possible and would mean that our galaxy now has an extra arm. But all of this is currently unknown to us simply because this is a completely new discovery. So let's start with what we know. Let's start with the discovery and also with what we know about the galaxy itself. Now, generally speaking, because of our location in within the galaxy, it's almost impossible for us to see what the galaxy looks like or to try to imagine what the shape of the galaxy even is. As a matter of fact, it took decades and decades of three-dimensional analysis to sort of figure out that our galaxy was most likely a spiral galaxy with several arms. Possibly somewhat similar to some of the other galaxies, such as the Andromeda. But the scientists did not figure this out by looking at stars or by looking at star motion. They actually figured this out by looking at something entirely different. The motion of hydrogen gas. And specifically here by measuring what's known as the hydrogen line. Hydrogen line refers to an extremely specific frequency of 1.42 GHz that's occasionally emitted by a hydrogen atom when the electron goes through its spin change. The actual process is sort of complicated for a single video, but we know that this is a fact and we know that these hydrogen lines are emitted by hydrogen gas. And because the hydrogen line emissions are so specific, the actual frequency is so specific, the changes in the frequency allow the scientists to measure how the gas moves across the galaxy, which allow the scientists to do a lot of things and a lot of different calculations in regards to the Milky Way. First of all, it allowed the scientists to calculate the speed with which our galaxy was spinning in different parts of the galaxy. This is known as the galactic rotation curve. At the same time, by using the estimates from the rotation curve, they could then start using this data to try to calculate distances to various objects and to various galactic arms. Over time, this allowed the scientists to work out the general structure of our own galaxy, identifying the four major galactic arms present in the Milky Way galaxy. Or in other words, the scientists realize that our galaxy, the Milky Way, seems to have four major galactic arms. It would sort of maybe look like this if you were to look at it from the outside. Although in this case, there would also be a lot of material around the galaxy as well. But over time, they also discovered some additional arms that were sort of partial or they were not really complete. For example, there's one right here, the so-called new outer arm. And there's also a tiny one right here known as the Orion Cygnus. Which is, by the way, where the solar system is located as well. And so all of this was essentially done by measuring various gas moving across the galaxy. And specifically identifying the location and the velocity of the gas. And because all of this just requires a radio telescope, it essentially can be done from any part of the planet. These types of radio waves usually go through our planet and can be detected by any radio telescope pretty much anywhere. You can technically even build one yourself. The frequency here is not very different from a typical Wi-Fi antenna or from a typical antenna used in um, telecommunication. But naturally, for some of the more detailed observations or for something really, really far away, you would require a pretty large telescope. Maybe even the largest telescope. Like you know, the one in China called FAST, the one that we can sort of check out by using Google Earth and by looking at it from a distance of a few hundred meters. This is the largest radio telescope we have right now, it's approximately half a kilometer in diameter. And having become fully functional and fully operational last year, this is now probably the most exciting radio telescope on the planet. Especially because the Arecibo is no longer operational. And so by using this telescope, the scientists behind the paper you can find in the description below decided to see if they can find some unusual hydrogen lines somewhere else out there. And they seem to have identified something they refer to as the cattail. Or is it cattail? I'm not sure. Anyway, so they found something. And that something is in a very strange location. It's sort of somewhere right here. Now remember, we are in this region. So this is almost on the other side of the galaxy, which would kind of make sense that we didn't actually get to see it before. And it's also pretty far away roughly around 72,000 light years away from us. And so literally on the outskirts of the other side of the galaxy. And that's of course the region that we don't really get to see much, we don't really get to study much, but also a region that's probably hiding a lot of interesting things. With this one potentially being one of them. But before we go on, well, let's talk about the discovery from last year. 
Last year I've talked about the discovery of what the scientists refer to as the Radcliffe Wave. This was an unusually large formation several thousand light years in length that seemed to be super close to our own planet. And it was always there, but we've only discovered it last year. And that's because our techniques and also our instruments have improved so much that we can now see things that were always there, but we just couldn't see them before. You can find more information in the video somewhere right there. Anyway, so it shouldn't really come as a surprise that we've discovered something else, possibly even a completely new galactic arm. Especially because even though there are four major arms in the galaxy, there seem to be a lot of minor ones here and there as well, with this really really large one discovered a couple of decades ago. Now obviously there's no explanation for why these smaller arms exist, or actually even why large arms exist, or how galaxies acquire arms, but it's clear that it's definitely possible. As a matter of fact, it's sort of important to understand that arms are not actually structures. A more appropriate definition for them would be over densities. These are sort of like crests of waves. So just like a typical wave will create a wave-like formation with certain parts of the wave being more dense than other parts, in a typical spiral galaxy you'll find something relatively similar. And in this case, if you were to try to trace a path of a single star across the galactic arm, you'll actually realize that the material goes inside the arm, stays in there for a little bit, and then leaves afterwards. So these are not permanent objects, they're just over densities. There's just more stuff inside of them than outside of them. But their actual origin, or why there are like four of them here, or why smaller ones exist, all of this is sort of beyond the explanation right now. There are a lot of different suggestions, but no specific theories explaining everything. And so what exactly do we know about this formation? Cattail. Cattail. Well, first of all, the way all of this was measured is by trying to measure the velocity of this gas, and specifically the difference of velocity. For example, they've discovered that on average, certain parts of this gas was traveling at about 150 km per second, but the velocity range was between 170 km per second, a little bit closer to the galaxy, and 130 km per second, a little bit farther away, with a total mass of material present in this gas being about 65,000 masses of the Sun. So this is a huge chunk of gas very likely just as big as the Radcliffe wave I previously mentioned. But if this is just a gas, or if it's just some sort of a gas filament, this will be the most unusual, farthest gas filament ever found. And it would also be very difficult to explain its origins. Maybe it's some sort of a broken down galactic arm, or maybe it was created in some other way from a galaxy that was absorbed a long time ago. Right now there's really no explanation. If, however, this is actually a part of another galactic arm, it doesn't seem to match the galactic plane. As a matter of fact, it seems to be sort of warped, and if so, something really massive must have warped it. So there's even more mystery there as well. And in terms of the actual size of this object, it seems to be about 3600 light years in length and approximately 670 light years in width. But the scientists here suggest that the length could be actually up to about 16,000 light years, making this one of the most unusual and one of the largest objects in the galaxy. And because this image sort of shows us that it's not actually connected to the galactic arm and seems to be completely by itself, right now it doesn't really have a very good explanation. But it would still not be unusual. Remember, Radcliffe wave is roughly around 9000 light years in length. And this was hiding right at our doorsteps. So discovering something like this farther away is not really unexpected. But trying to explain this is still going to be difficult. So for example, we know that most gas filaments, especially larger gas filaments, normally are much much closer to the center of the galaxy. So what exactly happened here? How did this end up so far away? But if this is not a gas filament, but some sort of a disturbed galactic arm, then I guess the next question is, what exactly happened to our galaxy a long time ago to disturb a galaxy in order to sort of separate one of the arms? With the next obvious question of course being, what arm did this come from? Obviously, to disturb a galactic arm, you would have to have some sort of a major collision and possibly some other major disturbance in order to actually create two arms out of a single galactic arm. But if this is a result of some sort of a massive galactic collision, well then there's a whole new set of questions that needs to be answered as well. Which galaxy? When did it happen? What exactly happened to this galaxy? And why is it that only this part of the galaxy was disturbed, but nothing else? And so because of this, at the moment, Cattail provides a lot more questions than answers. Actually, everything about it is a question. At this point, I would even question the name. Cattail or Cattail? Also, where's the rest of the cat? And so unfortunately, that's kind of all we know for now. We know it's there, we know that it seems to be some sort of a chunk of gas, and it seems to be a really large piece of gas. But other than that, nobody knows where it came from. 
Once we discover more, I'll make sure to follow this up with another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe if you still haven't, check out the previous video, so more right there, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and maybe come back tomorrow to learn something else. Maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining the channel membership, or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye. No, really, where is the rest of the cat?